Alrighty, here we are. Happy Saturday, everybody. Welcome to the CNC with Dave Gantt show. I got my buddy Javi back on uh, at the homestead. Howdy, folks. Um, and we've got uh, got some photos I'm going to show tonight. Uh, you know, every show now, I remind folks, you can send them anytime. So if you have done a cool project you want to show off, uh, you can get the, uh, let me put the email address up here. Dave Gatton at att.net. Yeah, here it is. There we go. I knew I had it somewhere. But that's the email address you can use to send me any project pictures. Please don't wait till the end of the show. Because <laughs> some of them I'm showing tonight were ones I got at the end of last week's show. So, because it takes me a little minute to get them, depending on how you send them, get them queued up over here. So, um, but yeah, we're going to show a few of those. And of course, we'll do the Q&A. If anybody's got any uh, questions about anything, we'll try to try to help answer those. Um, before we get started doing much of anything, though, I wanted to talk about something here, get a little serious here for a minute. But uh, I think pretty much everybody out here in the community knows Michael Mertzke. Uh, him and his wife, uh, Kelly, uh, had a baby just over a week ago, I think, right out a week ago. And anyway, there were a few, um, a few issues, I guess, uh, with that. And I don't know how to I don't even know how to pronounce what it was, but um, this is what Mike put on Facebook. Uh, I'm not even going to begin to try to pronounce that, but anyway, hypoxemic encephal encephalopathy. Okay, that, that sounds that sounds about right. But anyway, I just wanted you to know that uh, little Colin is going to have um, some challenges ahead. And they could use some help. So uh, I'm going to put this on here. And I'm going to leave that running the whole show here. This is a GoFundMe account. Uh, if you want to donate, uh, you know, if you can, please do. If you can't, you know, if you don't have, you know, if you're not where you can donate, that's cool. But how about uh, sharing it out? You know, that would be good to get the word out, too. So I'm going to leave that. Um, scrolling across tonight and there is a link down in the show notes if you go down on youtube and you hit the little show me thing i think it's like one of the first links but you'll see the, the gofundme account so if you can give a little and if you can't just share it out or get you know get the word out and uh i, I didn't even share my screen i forgot i wasn't sharing ah. but there is the gofundme account so, anyway, uh, did he say whether it was mild or, or or moderate or anything? Or well, I don't know. There's actually a Facebook group. Um, I forget what it's called. It's something for Colin, or I can't mm -hmm. remember exactly what it was. But uh, but anyway, well, hopefully everything will go well. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, but but they're going to have some, you know, some yeah some challenges ahead, so they could use a little help. And I know usually when somebody needs help, you know, the community but steps up, a, particularly a veteran. So uh, yes, yes. So uh, so anyway, do what you can, folks, yes. and I would appreciate it. Um, I guess I should look at the comments. <laughs> I haven't even turned those on over here. Yeah, Let's take yeah. a look and see who's here. We got Ray Jones, Dale Ludlum, uh, Charles Lawrence, Dave Krause, Ron Goudeau, Glenn Helwig, Wayne Hurl, Steve from Harnell Media is here, Greg Oler, Leo Steger, um, 
some guy named Harvey's wood shop. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'll leave, I see you. Dave Matthews, JJ. Yeah, Dave Matthews, Stephen D. I'm not sure who that is. Paul Stewart, Harry Raglan, Richard Kowalski, Jim Sinicola's here, Kevin Ells, uh, Harry's Place. I'm not sure. Um, not sure who that is, but welcome. Thomas Graham, Chuck Cobb, Bob P. A lot of folks from Oklahoma, looks like. Uh, Darren Burrs, Jason Pulliam, Gary Hammett, Wood Creations, Wendy Euler. Hello, Wendy. Uh, Lazy O Woodworks. That's John Ultifer. He sent some photos. We're going to be showing those here in a little bit. Keith Glassnap, Wild Bill Larison, <laughs> and Ron Stevens. So welcome, everybody. I think I'm caught up now with a Yep. The comments, but uh, Troy also, uh, opted yeah, good old Troy Johnson, yeah. Barry oh, Potosi. And you know what? I think, ah, oh, nuts, I forgot to do it. Dad, damn it. Well, I'll just have to grab it off the wall. I got something hanging back here, mm -hmm. and I want to give a big shout out back here. I showed it on the coffee sessions, but I know a lot of you folks, uh, you know, have to work for a living, so you can't make it to the coffee station. Let me pull that off the wall real quick and show it. To you. This was made by Larry yeah. Galt, and he made it and sent it to me. I didn't even know he was making it, but it is a, a live edge uh, thing, and he put the coffee session ears. Coffee session ears. It is just super cool looking. So thanks yep. again, Larry. I'm sure he's probably out there somewhere. Maybe he's watching. I don't know. But uh, but anyway, yeah. So that's that's not my project, but it's the only project I have to show <laughs> that uh, that Larry did for me. So thank you, Larry, for that. Uh, Cool little sign there. All righty. Let's, uh, I don't see any questions. I guess we'll go ahead and start off and do some, some yep. photos and then see if anybody has any questions after the fact there. Mm -hmm. Let me scroll down. I've had to go back and find these emails, but we're going to start with, uh, Greg Oler. I think he, I believe he sent these to me. Uh, late last week, right when we were getting ready to get off of here, so I didn't get time to show these. But I want to I want to show them because they're cool. So here we go. And Greg, I know you're out there, so if you want to uh, talk about these, and I'm going to be reading your email as well. He says. Here are some pics of a shadow box I built for the spouse of a fallen firefighter. The CJ in the center of the cross are his initials. So this is a shadow box. Um, he doesn't he doesn't say the size or anything. So Greg, if you if you want to throw that in the chat. Um, and let us know about that. And I think there's like, here's a close up of the, mm -hmm. the cross here. So CJ is in the middle. That's the uh, fallen firefighter's initials. And let's see. And then there was a picture, um, I guess, of them presenting. Oh, there it is. Now you know the size. It's, 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 it's standing at the base of the, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good size, then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Cool thing. Well, I figured based on the flag that's in here, I figured it had to be pretty good size. But that's the, uh, uh, let's see. The patches are from all over the United States, and Wendy sold them on the sold them on the banner for. Uh, I, I imagine she meant sewed, not sold, <laughs> on the banner, roughly twenty-four by twenty-four. Yeah, let's uh, let me back up 
and I can. Yeah, I see the banner. Okay. So yeah, I uh, got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, they must be sewed on there. Right, right. That is that is really cool. Look yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah, Wendy just corrected it. That that darn autocorrect. Yeah, well, it's hard to type with those boxing gloves on, you know. <laughs> yeah, that is really cool. Yeah, they're from all over. Good evening, Andrew. Andrew Haig just popped in. That is very nice. Oh yeah. yeah, I see the I see the bar, the rod I guess going through here hanging to hang that. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I see. There's it. some different flag and the emblems. Yep. Yeah. Just a fantastic job, Greg. Mm -hmm. And Wendy, I know Wendy helps too. So I won't <laughs> leave Wendy out. All right. Um. So there was that one. Now let me get another one queued up here. And this one, this one is interesting because I just noticed something about it just a few minutes ago when I was when I was moving them all over here to get them put in this folder so I could show them. And he sent this, I think, last Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Yeah, it was last Saturday, right when we were getting ready to. Uh, he says, this is a, re um, let me show it here. He says, this is a retirement gift for our retiring superintendent. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about it <laughs> just shows you that. The longer you look at something, the more you, you see in it. But I was sitting here reading it today as I was moving it over, and I'm like, 20 years, dedicated service. And then it, then I'm like, wait a minute, Avon Community School Corporation. And then I saw the Avon Orioles logo down here, and I'm like, well, wait a minute. Now there's a Purdue P right here. This must be from Avon, Indiana. And that's about 10 miles down the road from where I grew up. So mm. I didn't even notice that last week when I first first glanced at it. So that is uh, that is very cool. And this, I didn't mention, this is from Dan Chapin, C-H-A-P-I-N. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Chapin or Chapin. Mm -hmm. Chapin or Chapin, yeah. I don't know if he's uh, out there. I didn't see him. But, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. We and got a back we, in got, research. we got a CNC question when you're ready for it from from Barry. From Barry. Okay, yeah, I think I see it. Barry Batosi. Let's see. Has anyone used, used their, their center for rotary machining. Are, are you talking about setting the Z, the Z zero for the center line of the axis? Because if he's, you are, that's how I always do mine. Yeah, he's he says the next one, he's having a problem when it comes to a tool change. Um, hmm. Okay. Um, I did a video. <laughs> I know, surprise, right? I did a video, what, a month or three, four weeks ago when I was doing some of the rotary axis stuff. And I'm pretty sure I showed in that video how I zeroed my Z axis. Because a lot of the times when you're doing stuff, you, you know, you use like an end mill or something. And, um, do a roughing pass and then come back with the, um, um, you know, like a tapered ball nose or some kind for the finishing pass. So, yeah, but I, I, if I'm understanding you, Barry, that's, I think that's what you're asking is how do you, how do you center the, or how do you zero the Z axis? using the center line of the rodeo, uh, rodeo rotary axis. Um, 
and that to me that's the best way to do it rather than trying to do in the center of the material but if you'll give me a second i will look for that video um, and i will share the link because i just did it not all that long ago Okay, I think, I can't remember which one it's in. I think it's in this one. The one that says, rotary, my rotary axis set up for my GAT and CNC. I believe that's the one it's in. I'll try to scroll through, through here and see. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me just uh, share this real quick. This is the video. And it's it's called My Rotary uh, My Rotary Access Setup for My GAT and CNC. And you see that I'm at about 10 minutes and 25 seconds. And you see I've got the touch plate in my hand. So I'm showing how... I bring that over to the top of that uh, tailstock, and what I've done is I've already determined the distance from the top of the tailstock to the center line of the rotary, because you notice I don't have any material stuck in that thing yet. And this is how I'm demonstrating how it touches off, and then when I move that, and then move it over and then tell it to go to zero, you will see that it comes down right to the center line of the thing. So I think that's what you're talking about. Um, so that, that should show you how to do it there. He says he sees that, oh, let's see. Okay. Oh, part of the video is covered by your banners, uh, Stephen D. was saying. Oh. Yeah, I forgot that was on. Okay, let's see. We go right back here to that 10. No? Oh, I guess I was reading that. That's what I get for not using my glasses, because I thought it was... Oh, yeah, it's at 15 minutes or so <laughs> yeah yeah he says oh uh, barry says okay that's what he has to build next okay yeah and like i said all you need to do is is move the you, you know move your bit over your tail you, you could use your headstock if you wanted i use the tail stock because it's got that nice flat surface back there and you know so i just set it on touched it off on there and then brought it down to where it was um you know even with the center line that little point on your tailstock and then that i just used that number to put into the uh the script for the touch off plate so that it will know that you know my plate instead of just being an eighth inch thick it's adding that distance to it, which was i forget what it was an inch and something um as well so but that's how you do it right there yep and let's see here we got mary mallory's here this evening how you doing mary hey barbara, barbara. hey Check barbara florida how you doing barbara Marcelo, Ronald, uh, Ledger, and Michael Bell came in. Yeah. So howdy to all of you. Howdy. Okay. All righty. Well, I, get, I don't see any more questions other than that one right now, so I'll move on to some more photos. 
We don't have a whole lot of them anyway, but uh, let's see here. Okay, this one was sent to me today by Mr. Jim Sinicola, and I know he's out there. Yep. Pull up his email. He says, this is, let me get it over here, spiral art done with his ox laser. Wow. This custom-made frame made of stabilized ash. The size is nine inches by nine inches, and it's only straight lines used except for the very center circle. Let's see if I can uh, zoom in on this and get a good look. Yeah, it looks sweet. Yeah. Oh, I see. It. Yeah, yeah. So it's all all straight lines. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, got a nice. Uh, yep. Might make you dizzy. You stare at it a while. Well, for me, it brings back my um, my calculus uh, two classes on limits, and because <laughs> the limit of a curve is uh, is a straight line. Anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just. Uh, yeah, nightmares. Well, I enjoyed those classes, but still, nightmares. Okay. All right, and this is the last one I have, unless anybody sends me some more here while we're talking. But this last one is from John Ulthifer, and I saw him out there. He's watching tonight, and I got his email here, so I want to kind of um, – show this and he says uh sweet I'll share my latest project with you in case you want to use it on saturday night show i had a customer contact me with the first attached photo which is what this is she saw this la dodgers shelf for bobbleheads mm -hmm. and she wondered if i could make one for her husband but for the milwaukee brewer brewers okay anything's better than la but yeah uh, instead, at first I told her no, I wasn't interested because the LA one is all straight lines and easy to do with the wood, but the Brewer's logo mm. has too many curves. But she was persistent about me trying to come up with something. So I decided because of all the curves, the only way I could do it was to do it in multiple layers. Ah, He traced the Brewer's logo into CAD started working on it and this is the design he came up with so let me go to the next picture this ah. is um, this is what i think is going to be part of the mitt yep yep uh, baseball mitt uh let's see let me read on here the second photo is oh okay i got him in the wrong order because he says that's the finished project this is so this will be the third and fourth photos are the cup couple of layers i had five different designs it is 42 inches high 38 inches wide five inches deep it is six layers of mdf with two coats of primer three coats of paint front and back layers well let me go let me go ahead and scroll through these pictures because there's there's one and there's another part of it and then i'm going to go ahead and get to the final deal so the finish oh, they wanted they wanted the glove not the shelves gotcha, gotcha. yeah so it's 42 inch. well there's shelves in here if you look right right oh that's pretty cool yeah yeah so and, and been, you know because la's got that l and the a yeah, i see the m and the b so he made this like um you know of course there's the baseball right in the center of the glove yeah, and then yeah. there's, but there's still all kinds of shelves in here which is cool yep, yep. so it's 42 inches high 38 inches wide five inches deep, six layers of MDF with two coats of primer and three coats of paint. Front and back layer are half inch MDF and the four middle layers are three quarter MDF. I hollowed out all the areas that are not seen to reduce weight. Yeah, that thing would be pretty heavy with yeah. all that MDF yeah, being that big. Uh, so that's that's pretty smart to do that. Uh, but it still weighed 
weighed in at almost 45 pounds, he says. There were 14 pockets for bobbleheads. Each pocket is six and a half inches or higher. Uh, hopefully this will inspire others to create similar projects with layers of wood. Uh, and then he says, thank you all. Thank oh, thank you for all your help. I love the Gat and CNC community. Yeah, I do too. It's <laughs> awesome. I might be a little bit biased, but I think it I is. like them. <laughs> But that is just. Uh, Marcelo's asking if you got the photos uh, he sent you uh, two weeks back. Okay, I'm glad you spoke up because I will go look for him. Oh and yeah, the Gary, 3D artwork is that is that? I don't know what it is, but he says. Uh, if you got my, e he got two emails. Uh, you got two emails from him, supposedly. Oh, okay. And Harry Ragland is uh, mentioning you could uh, do that without shutting off the laser and without backtracing. They're uh, talking about the uh, the squares uh, that uh, Jim Sinicola did. Uh, okay. And Keith Stanford, what are your thoughts on shielded versus non-shielded wire? Oh, I've got thoughts on that. Depends what you're shielding with the wire. First of all, and I'll, I'll be quick about this answer. First of all, if you do not shield the wire properly, you can actually create an antenna out of the shield and it will exacerbate your problem rather than solve it if you have a problem. If you don't have a problem, don't use shielded cable. Um, shielded cable is great for uh, to prevent... RF or line noise, but I don't know anybody that has that much line noise that's going to interfere with, in the case of CNC controllers and such, uh, the, the, the voltages that are being produced there. I mean, we're talking low DC voltages, 36, 48 volt, 24 volt. I mean, nothing's going to interfere with those, with those things. And, uh, or even the five volt pulses. I've I've never had an issue with using non shielded wire. And uh, if you don't know how to shield it, like I said, properly, you can run into some problems, particularly with um, multiple power supplies that are isolated. And which one do you shield it to? And if you don't, well. Okay. Yeah, I. I have uh, on my machine, uh, at least the because I'm using some of that wire that I got a long time ago, and it was shielded. But that's what's running through my drag chain for my um, stepper motors. The wire that I use for my limit switches is not shielded. It's just regular two wires, basically speaker cable, is what it said on the box. Yep. So. And it works fine. So, yeah. All right, Marcelo, I found your emails. I don't see any explanation, but since you're out there in the chat, you can tell us what we're looking at here. And Glenn was asking how about ham operator running high power. Well, if you're a good ham operator, you'll have everything. Uh, all your high power will be transmitted externally and not into your house. Uh, I, I assume you're not your your transmitting antenna is not next to your your box, and if it is, you got bigger problems than shielding. Um, but uh, yeah, we're we're CNC. We're not ham operator on this show. So well, I, I'm both. <laughs> I'm both. So I. <laughs> well, I'm both too. But oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Show, so. Let's move on to Marcelo's project. Um, I'm not sure what we're looking at here, Marcelo. So if you can um, chime in here, he says it's 3D art and inlay work. Ah, inlay work. So if if yeah, if that's uh, some inlay stuff, that's some pretty fancy stuff right there. Uh, yeah, very nice. 
is the red Marcelo? Is the red stained or is it? Uh, let me uh, let me yeah, zoom well, in and see if I can yeah. see. The red and pink. Uh, I'm assuming it's not. Yeah, that's got to be some type of stain as opposed to the. Uh, yeah, it's the same grain on the entire wood. So. Hmm. Interesting. It's it's pretty interesting though. What? That's a lot more. Very intricate. Fancy stuff that I that I would want to do. Yeah. All wood is purple heart, uh, blood wood. Hmm. Okay. Okay. No, no paint or no stain. Paint. On all wood. So All okay. Wood. So I guess the pink section is taken from a lighter color and then the uh, darker uh, from a Yeah, that's uh, – how long did it take to do all that, Marcelo? Maple and walnut. That had to be a pretty uh, – and how big is it, too? If uh, – that's – yeah, that's pretty, pretty intense there, isn't it? Bobby Sams says hello. 40 hours, 13 inch diameter. 13 inch, that's pretty good size. The 13 inch or foot? I can't read that very well. Uh, 13 inches, it looks like. Yeah, 13. Yeah, that'd be an awful lot of purple yeah, 13 heart. Feet, I, it wouldn't fit on my computer screen if it was that big. Yeah. <laughs> uh, very well done, Marcelo. That's that's pretty awesome there. All right, let's move on to this one. This one, uh, Notre Dame. I'm assuming this is inlay work too. Looks like some kind of a tray, cutting board tray or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. That is. Yeah. Like that See, segment. I mean, this stuff is gorgeous to me, but there's I would never even try to attempt something like that. I just don't have that kind of patience, I guess. Oh, I do, and I don't. Well, I don't have that kind of time. I'd have that kind of patience. I'd love to do something like that, but uh, so sad part is, if 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 you do it for yourself, it's very rewarding. If you do it for somebody else, I mean. That kind of stuff, those are one-offs uh, as far as sales. Nobody, no, they'd rather see it painted than 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 beautiful yeah. work like that. Yeah, you know, it's it's a darn shame. That's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, that is. And I guess if you were going to try to sell something like this, you'd have to find a, a Notre Dame fan that really loved Notre Dame. Yeah, he says 99% of his work are given as gifts. Yep. That's 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 where the true passion and and that that's that's what I would do. I mean, it's 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 wonderful to put that kind of effort and if somebody if you know someone who can truly appreciate it, then then yeah, you've been doing yeah. this for about a year. About a year. That's fantastic. Appealing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's hit these. I got a couple more from him here. These are going to knock your socks off, too. I love tessellation, man. Just give me tessellation any day. See, that just, that just messes with my mind to look at it. It's uh, Zoom in on the squares itself, on the inside of the squares. Because I, I, could, I could see those others. That, ah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Yeah, see, I could see the – yeah, okay, so that looks like walnut, maple, um, purple heart. What else you got in there? That might that might be it. And then isn't that just three different – or no, one. Let's see, one. No, two, there's a few. Four. Because like. a... you got, you got where my mouse is, you got this color. Yeah. And this looks like walnut here. Yep. And then maple here, and then maybe some whatever That's that purple is. That's Purple Heart. Blood yeah, no, blood. Paduke, oh, it's Paduke and Wenge. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that is 
freaking gorgeous right there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it still messes with my mind. I sit here and look at it. I'm like, holy cow. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's check out this last one. I think this is the last one. And it is kind of similar to the other one, but it's this one, I th I think you showed this one two weeks ago or three. Did I? I'm pretty sure I, I, I know I've seen this before. Well, you might have seen it in the after show if it was sent. Oh, it's possible. It's, oh, yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, he sent it. I say it. after yeah. show. It's just me and Javi. <laughs> yeah. It's not really a show. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, hey, Russ, how's it going? Drag in here. Yeah, I'm telling you. That guy. Yeah, that guy. All right. Um, I saw a couple of questions, or at least one other question, but it's, I think, scrolled away now. Let me see if I can find it. Dave Matthews was asking if it's if it's veneers or, or, or parquet. I mean, uh, basically, is it sectional or is it veneers? But I believe it's uh, sectional. I believe they're all inlays. Well, not inlays. Well, wait a second. I don't know. Is it inlays or is it segmented? <laughs> it looks very similar to the other one, just a different shape. Yep. Yep. Is what I think. Uh, while he's going to answer that, I want to catch this question here. That was walnut, um, maple, cherry. Wenge, uh, he says wedge, wedge, but I assume it's Wenge, uh, and uh, Sapil. That that other one. So, yeah, that's yeah. wow. All right, Mark S. Sectional on the last two, by the way. Ask, how tight do the V-groove bearings need to be on the aluminum angles? Ah, easy question. Only snugged up. when You, you should be able to still turn them by hand, but with some resistance. You're basically yeah. just trying to take the slop out yeah. so that you can't sit there. You shouldn't be able to spin it real easy. When you grab it with your fingers, if you can't turn it at all, then you're too tight. Yeah. But if you can turn it and feel it rubbing consistently on that angle, that's what you want. And the first, uh, the first time you, you build it, it's got to uh, it's got to wear a little on the on the on the very very corners, so you will. Uh, so again, do it like like Dave said, finger tight. Run it a few times, back and forth, back and forth, and then again tweak it a little bit, finger tight, and and do this for do this a number of a few times, and and it'll reach a point where it's no longer going to. Uh, uh, form, I guess. You'll see it forms like a little hat on the on the very edge of the of the uh, aluminum. That's what you want. Okay, I think that's the only one I missed because we get we had a bunch of comments when I wasn't looking at that. I was looking at the the yeah. photos, so I don't think. I didn't see. I mean, I didn't see any. I saw comments, but I didn't see any any questions. Okay, Mark says thanks, so you should be good there. Marcelo also adds that all programs were made using Fusion three hundred and sixty. Yep. Good, good. I still have it. You know, I got <laughs> I got the Fusion three hundred and sixty a year free subscription or whatever. I guess what you call it to the commercial version of Fusion 360 that came as part of, well, I say free, but I'm sure it was figured in there somewhere uh, with that Avid that I bought. And I have not, I bet I haven't used that stuff 30 minutes. <laughs> I just, I just, yep. uh, I'm not a fan of Autodesk. I don't care what they call it. They keep, you know, cause back when it yep. was regular AutoCAD, I didn't like it. Back when it was AutoCAD Inventor, I didn't like it. Yep. And now it's Fusion 360, and I still don't like it. <laughs> so, but I guess it's just because I'm an old SolidWorks guy, and it's 
hard to uh, hard to break those habits. Let me click uh, my tail over here and see if anybody else pops in. Philip Still. Carter just joined us. All right. Good evening, Philip. Good evening, Philip. Um, how many of y'all out there? Um, I guess I don't have any more photos coming. Click it a couple of times to see. Uh, how many of y'all out there watched the uh, the video I did a few days ago unboxing the hobby box? Um, I saw it. <laughs> I figured you might watch it. Um, that uh, that's a pretty slick little unit, I have to oh. say. It's, uh, and I was telling Hobby when, just before we went live, I, you know, I think the, the USB cord that he sent with it was, I don't know, four or five feet. And then it's I had to... one that was a little bit longer, maybe five or six feet. And that's what I'm using. But because so I use that kiosk. I exactly how, how, how much it is because I just happen to have about 15 of them here. All right. <laughs> Let's uh, see. Yeah, that's four feet. It's, but I, yeah, I thought I yeah it was, and you know I use that stupid kiosk thing I got. I was saying it's it's, and I it's, like to keep it at the front of the machine and the controller towards the back of the machine. So I ordered a ten foot cable, and I was hoping to try it out today. But Amazon didn't bring it until just a few minutes before we were going live here. So it's sitting out there on the machine bed i haven't connected it up yet but i think that will probably work uh, i agree better. with harry i think the the hobby box would look fantastic in black laser cut acrylic and by the way uh, let me let me a little note on i i have a bit of a horror story from black laser cut a clear acrylic i used to be in uh part of this uh business networking group and i used to make these custom business card holders with my laser with back when I had the sign shop with the with the laser and it was um, it was half inch black acrylic that was in my machine when it caught fire <laughs> so um, that's, so every, that's the email you're looking for if you want to send pics and somebody just asked that so I oh, posted it again and so uh, but yeah that'd be fantastic uh, the problem with um the, the problem with the black laser cut acrylic is I would have to design a whole new mounting system for to mount all the pieces onto the acrylic. It'd be it be uh, it, it'd be a challenge. And uh, and if it was like HDPE, it'd be a piece of cake, I guess. Black HDPE. I guess they have that, don't they? But then again, how are you going to get that to stick together? Black acrylic, at least. Oh, and that's another problem. Black acrylic, you you drop that thing or you look at it the bad way, it'll either fall apart or crack. And uh, I've been look, I've been toying with the idea of of coming up with a different uh, material, but uh, you know, and, and charging a little more for whoever wants it, but. Uh, it's it's uh, yeah. wood is nice and simple. Yeah, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Chris has a question: says, Do air cooled spindles get pretty hot when they run for a while? No, they do not. I know people probably think, oh well, if it doesn't have the water cooled stuff running through it, how does it stay cool? But it's no different than a router. It has you know running those higher. And the only difference with an air cooled and we've talked about this before is you can't run them all the way down really low below 8000 like you can a water cool because then the fan does not pro provide enough cooling so for example on my avid they have it set up where you can't run it any lower than 8000 but you know if you're buying a router you're probably not going to run it less than that anyway so right uh, but you know, I know all about running stuff a long time. <laughs> uh, 
and it yep. does not get hot. And yep. you know, it's got, if you look at some of the air cooling too, it's not the, the you know, how the water cooling is that round thing that slides down into the aluminum mount. Whereas yep. the air cool ones are usually squared. So they've got like this aluminum chunk. They're really heavy. You know, yep. so they've got this big aluminum chunk built around them and that just acts as a heat sink too. So, you know, it dissipates the heat and between that fan blowing down, they don't get yep. hot. And be careful uh, for those of you with water cooled spindles. And I'm speaking from experience here. If you don't maintain the water, if it clogs uh, and stuff, I've had mine clogged, and then I was, I was cutting a few hobby boxes, and and that thing got it got pretty warm, with maybe, I don't know, maybe an hour's worth of 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 cutting, that thing got extremely warm when it had no flow in it. I mean, make sure it has water in it, or you'd probably end up burning something out. But, uh, but. Uh, but once you have even the slightest bit of movement, you could run it, well, practically forever. Mr. Jerry Brown asked, anyone ever replaced the main shaft on a spindle? My call it welded itself in place for some reason, about to have a $300 paperweight. Ooh, that hurts. Um, welded itself? had to replace one so you know i'm still on I, the spindle i started off with so you call it welded itself did you try um well no obviously it's too late now but i i would have I, I i i have the what's that thing called the muscle chuck so i it's not an issue with me but uh that's chuck that's right. Bob. good evening chuck I don't know that I've seen that name before. Maybe I have. I was not a fan of the box until I saw Dave's video of the black one. You sent him. I really like the black one. I may just be buying one soon as I burn up the controller on his sidewinder. Okay. As Oh, as I burnt up the controller on my sidewinder because he yeah. just burnt up. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, if, if I, I mean... I will I I will more than consider um it, it it's an extra obviously it's a, it's extra work um well it you know what I can do it with vinyl I suppose and it wouldn't take that much more work uh, I could either spray paint I I would have to buy lacquered uh, cabinet grade wood instead of the plain wood so it, it's a nice smooth black finish uh, and I could either put a uh, vinyl uh, you know regular uh, regular uh, vinyl on it uh, black vinyl or I could spray paint it but again it means more work which means more labor which means a higher cost but uh, I'll come up with a price for you and if you're interested in the black edition and then, just, uh, just for the record, I did not request a black one. That's just something Javi did. Yeah, I did that it, because it, I, it looks I pretty cool. But to be perfectly honest with anybody who's listening, I don't really care what the box looks like. You, yeah, you know me. I'm all about does it work? You know, does it work right? That's I all, haven't put I, I haven't put my own together yet. I haven't put my own together yet, and I've been uh, and I and I I painted it black on purpose. I think and then, the the cool thing about the black to me is that when you see the black, it it kind of doesn't look like wood at first, you know. Yeah. But like I said, you know, I don't I don't care what color it is. You could have painted it pink for all I care. I'm more worried about when I hook it up, is it going to work? And it did. So I'm a happy camper. You know? Yeah. I, I suppose I could buy some black formica and cut it. Yeah. But the, uh, if formica chips, if you don't, if you don't cut it just right, you know, so it, it gets to be problematic. It gets to be problematic and, and you got to factor those costs in. Yeah. Cause I, you know, while I, while I'm not going to, 
while I'm not making mint, I, I certainly I, I, I didn't go into this to to give money away. So, <laughs> uh, for Micah, how much idea. to bend up a metal box? Well, let me tell you about metal stuff. Yeah, uh, <laughs> to bend up one, there's nobody here watching that would pay what it costs to do one. Nope. You'd have to get you know, probably 10, 15, 20 or so, you know, that's where you get the price break when you get multiples of stuff done. So if you're asking if I'm going to design a metal box, nah, forget it. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Go buy something off of, uh, at your big box store or yeah. something like that. If you don't, you know, if you want a metal box. And the, and a couple things, a couple things about metal is, um, or, or even plastic in order to, in order to, Basically, I mean, what you're talking is I'm including about $20, which is practically my cost. And it's even less than my cost for the enclosure section of the box. That's how much I budget it to. If you were talking a, a metal enclosure or a plastic enclosure, you look anywhere on, on Amazon, as I have for months at a time, and you try to get a metal, a, 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 plastic enclosure that will fit in a flat rate box exactly because that's barely the room that I have inside for proper cooling. Any smaller, I don't have enough cooling. Any bigger, and you just doubled or tripled your shipping cost. So all the factor in all that stuff, and you're still looking at, as from what I've seen, minimum $60, $70 for the box. So yeah, if you want to pay $100 more for the whole kit, we can go plastic or two or three hundred dollars more. We can go metal. It's your call. <laughs> I'm just here to save you money because it's a hobby CNC. Bob P says, I sent a show and tell and I've got it queued up, Bob. Sweet. So here we go. Let me uh, enlarge it a bit. This is. Hey, what was that old game? Aggravation or something? What was that? Is that what this is? An aggravation game or is it some other kind of? I don't know. It reminds me of the aggravation game. Didn't they have that little pop up thing with the die right in the center? That looks like part. That looks like part cheesy, but it's not. I mean, I don't think it is. Obviously, it might there be. It's called Wahoo. That's what he's got on it. I don't know. What say you, Bob P? We. Uh, yeah, Mako Shark says it would start a fire. No. <laughs> yeah. Chuck Hobbs says we can yeah. paint it ourselves. David's right. I just want one that works. I just thought it was an option is all. Yeah, he just, I don't know. He just painted it for whatever reason. I didn't know, you know. It, I didn't know it, would, it would start I, a I, fire. I don't really care. I just want it to work if I'm going to. That's, that's funny. With all the cooling I got in there, I think it'll put out a fire. And by the way, if you're going to talk starting a fire, sawdust, router, uh, down cut bit, uh, <laughs> it's you got to pay attention to your machines, guys. You can't just let them run by themselves. Half inch thick black foam PVC uh, yeah, Sinatra. Okay, yeah, ag aggravation. Okay, I thought that's what it looked like because. I mean, it's been a long, long time since I played that game, but I remember it had like, I think it's the one that used to have the, the little bubbly thing, a little dome plastic thing and you push it and there was a couple that's, of dots uh, in there. Well, that's trouble or trouble or, uh, or sorry. Well, trouble is the, is the one you're thinking, but yeah, well, unless there's another one, aggravation. Ari's got played with cards though, isn't it? W what's that? Isn't sorry played with cards? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's not sorry. It's um I'm thinking it was aggravation. There's another one besides trouble. Trouble is the one with the click, click with the click click uh with the really noisy uh I gotta I gotta look uh, that up now. Yeah, now Here now I, now you got me doing it. <laughs> Let me Google aggravation. Yeah, trouble. Let's see. Aggravation. 
images. Ah, it's similar, but not exactly. Yeah, no, it, I guess it it's does. Got six. But... It's, it's got six instead of four. Yeah, and I don't see the one with... Uh... Let's see... Well, I see Wahoo. Yeah, I see. I get your marble or something to the center. I I see a whole bunch of Wahoo games. That's funny. I wonder now. I want to learn how. I have never played Wahoo. Yeah, it looks like they've got like six player, four player, five player, all kinds of stuff on here. Invented looking. in 1907. The aggravation was made around 1960. Ooh. So it was Troubles, the one that had the the little pop up thingy. What's that? The, you but say it was Trouble that had the trouble, little... Trouble had the pop-up uh, thing. Yeah, Mako Shark says he used... Uh, I, I mean, I was, I've been a sign maker for 12 years, and um, the um, <laughs> I have no problem with using... Uh, marbles. <laughs> Good old Troy. Wahoo in Oklahoma. Okay. I, I have no problem using PVC, uh, but it's... Uh, Popomatic dice, yeah, that's what it was. It had like a little plastic dome. Oh, frustration says Elmo Fudd. Maybe is there a game called Frustration? I don't know. Anyway, one of them games had had thing where it had two dice in there and you pop mm -hmm. that button and that's how you determine what your thing was. All right. Well, we've been on here about an hour. I'm out of pictures. Nobody else is wanting to send me yeah. pictures, I guess. Oh, in answer to that uh, other one, uh, yeah, I was saying black PVC doesn't work for this particular thing because the area that you have to, to glue is not enough to make a, a viable contact. Uh, I tried it. Like I said, I've been a, I, I still got black, well, white PVC at home, but same thing. Um uh, I need a lot more. I'm I'm using half inch thick ply. It's it's uh, you'd have to go with really thick PVC. And again, um, I can't sacrifice not even a quarter inch because the power supply it fits exactly in the uh, in the thing. So it's got to be half inch tops. And the uh, I'm looking at the boxes now. Okay, I got some more. <laughs> pictures here this these are from ron stevens sweet and he says let me get him queued up here how make what shark has got me ordering black pvc online <laughs> um let's see he says dave these are pictures of a box i made from pallet wood notice the three nail holes in the bottom piece yeah it is three inches by four inches by nine inches. The pieces are unknown hardwoods. That's what a lot of that pallet wood is. Sometimes it's just, it's just pallet wood. You don't know what the heck it was by the time you get it off of there. The profile was created on Inkscape. So there's that view. We can see the three nail holes there. Let's see if this is the right way to go. Come on. There we go. There's with the lid on it. That's pretty cool. I like that. Hmm. Nothing wrong with that. You can make some stuff out of pallet. Some decent stuff out of pallet wood. If you want to uh, go to the trouble to get it. To me, it's just a lot of work to get what little yeah. bit of wood you get out of a pallet. Because, you know, most pallets are like 48 by 40 or whatever, and then they have that roll of nails down the center so if you you know the quick way is just take a skill saw and yeah. cut them off but then you only get pieces about 19 inches by you know three or four inches wide or whatever i'll be right back but uh all righty here he says the missouri pallets are frequently hickory yeah yeah sometimes you get some good i mean i've had some oak and um, some good hardware, and sometimes you know, you know, because if it's a pallet, it's probably left stacked out behind a 
shop somewhere and, and it's all that gray patina type stuff and then you get it and you plane it up sometimes it's really some pretty looking stuff so but it's just a lot of work to to get you know get something out of it. you don't get that much wood out of one to me you don't get that much usable wood um, um, S wants to know what is the width of the upper part of the gantry on the Gatton. Um, the upper part. Um, I'm not sure unless you're talking about the that board on top, but all that's in the plants. And of course, the width of the gantry overall, you can make that uh, what you want. It's the, you know, the plans are made to use a half inch sheet of plywood as the table, which will get you a cutting area of about uh, 44, 45 by 34, something like that. But it is easily adaptable to go bigger or smaller. Michael Bell says some people are willing to pay more if they see recycled wood. Yeah, some people are into that. You know, they like um, they like all that stuff that it's uh, yeah, that's a good point too. Troy says you got to be careful on pallet wood. Some of them carry chemicals. Yeah. It uh, yeah, you got to know what what's in them all right let me click this thing one more time see if we get any more pictures to show up and we will um, if we don't we'll sign off and get out of here and I don't see any more but I did get an email that says that The hobby CNC Q and A and project picks is live, <laughs> so <laughs> that's good to know. What? <laughs> I said I did get an email, and it just came in. This uh... oh no, I guess I guess it's been there a while. I just didn't. Oh, see okay, it. yeah, I was gonna say what. But hey. it came in at like eight oh five. But it's telling me we're live, but <laughs> we already know that. So all right. Well, we're going to get out of here. I hope uh, everybody has an excellent Father's Day tomorrow. Uh, today is also the first day of summer, or first partial day, I think. I think tomorrow's the first full day. I, I think that's how it works. But, um, yep. yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Shamilton says, what the heck? Does Dave make me a 73 DHS paddle, whatever the cost? That's what I like. Money's no object. Just make one. I will That's do right. it. In fact, I've already got, you know, if you want the small one like I've been making, I've already got some of those made up. I just have to put the, put the stuff on it for you. And I'll do that tomorrow. Get it sent to you. Uh, all right. Yeah, we're going to get out of here. Um, thank you all. Again, don't forget uh, the thing scrolling across the bottom, the GoFundMe account for little Colin Mertzke. Yep. Uh, let me bring that up again. Oh, yes. And happy Father's Day to all of you. Yeah, tomorrow is That's right. Father's Day. So... So, yeah, let me uh, just one more time mention this. Um, yeah, I got uh, some, it's not mine. Somebody else created a GoFundMe account for Colin Mertzke, who's pictured um, right there. And he's got some challenges coming up and they could use some help. So, and it's uh, Michael and Kelly Mertzke. Uh, everybody should know Michael. He's pretty well known in the woodworking and cnc community both so 
do what you can and i appreciate it and happy father's day to everybody uh and have an awesome sunday tomorrow and we are out of here we'll see y'all good night <laughs>